Good morning, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to our worship service this morning. Easter was a little different this year. Maybe we couldn't celebrate it as we usually did in the past, but we rediscovered that we are the church, no matter where we are, whether we're in this building or whether you're sitting in your living room, we are the church. We the people, and the message remains the same no matter where we are. It blesses me to know that nothing can keep God's people down. No matter the circumstances, we as the body of Christ will find a way to worship the King of Kings. What is the reasoning behind this? It's quite simply because he lives. We can face tomorrow. As we enter into our time of worship, let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and thank you for this time together. A time that we can devote to you and express our gratitude for who you are and for the amazing plan that you created and carried out. A plan that included each of us as we seek salvation through you. We ask you, Lord, this morning that you would help us to draw closer to you and carry your message to others who are lost. Father, we also ask that the anointing would fall on Karen and Pastor Dean and Bob as they minister to us giving you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. So at this time now, as we continue to bring glory and honor to the Lord, let us listen to Bob Murphy as he sings Precious Lord. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand, people rejoice. Oh, I, what a blessing it is to be with you this morning. And welcome to our worship service, the second Sunday now of Easter. It's still Easter time and we're rejoicing in the Lord today. And I hope you are too. Uh, thanks to Bob Murphy for that beautiful song of Precious Lord, Take My Hand. And you know, in times like this, we are reaching out our hand to God and saying, God, Lead us through this time. Take my hand, Lord. And the Lord is taking hold of our hand and will see us through this time. This morning on this second Sunday of Easter, we want to talk about the fact that Jesus arose from the grave. But more importantly, what it means to us 
as Easter people. So let's sing together now. We're going to sing a beautiful song written by Bill and Gloria Gaither entitled, Because He Lives. And as we sing this song, we're going to do the first and the last verse of this song uh, today. And I invite you in home to sing along with us. Karen, for that a beautiful song. What an important song for us uh, today. Because he lives, oh, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. We are Easter people and we are rejoicing for we know that our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, is alive. He has risen from the grave. And this morning, I want to spend a few moments talking to you about why that is so important to us, why that is so encouraging to us, that because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow what it means for us today. To know that because he lives. I want to share with you some scripture this morning. This morning I'm in the book of Hebrews. This is the New Testament book of Hebrews. And I'm in the seventh chapter of, of Hebrews. And beginning uh, the reading at verse 23. Here are the words of encouragement for us today. Furthermore, the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing office, but he holds his priesthood permanently because he lives forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word today. The writer of Hebrews is telling us that Jesus 
is the great high priest. The word says just before that that he is a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. That he is our great high priest and that he is interceding for us. What the writer is saying to us this morning is there have been many who have served in the priesthood through the years, but they live and then they die. But Jesus lives forever. He is a priest who continues on forever, and he is always interceding on our behalf, even now. As you are sheltering in place, even now as you are in your homes and not able to go out and you're missing so many of your friends and you're missing being together in, in church and, and being near one another, that Jesus is interceding on our very behalf. And I want you to know that today, that because he lives we can face tomorrow. And we can face tomorrow because Jesus, the great high priest, is interceding on our behalf. Now, Jesus, on that last night with his disciples, in the Gospel of John chapter 14, says this. He says, because I live, you shall live also. Hear those words this morning, church. Hear the Savior say, because I live, you shall live also. Jesus is there interceding for us, but he has given us the victory. What does it mean that Jesus lives because he lives? What does that mean to us? It means that because he lives, we shall live also. The empty tomb, the empty grave means that the grave does not have a hold on us either. That because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, I know who holds the future. And life, this life, is worth the living just because he lives. Death has no hold on us. Maybe as you think this morning of people you have known and loved who have gone on to their eternal reward, let me say this to you. Because he lives, they died, but they're not dead. They're with the Lord. And there is a glorious reunion that will come one day. And that is encouraging to us. The grave cannot hold us. It could not hold Jesus, and it cannot hold us. You know, I've often said that we should contact the people at the cemetery and tell them when it comes to our grave plot that we just want to rent, not buy, because we're not actually going to stay in the grave. The grave cannot hold us. We shall rise, and that is the promise that Jesus gives us. Then one day... I'll cross the river and I'll fight life's final war with pain. And as death gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of heaven and I'll know my Savior reigns. Because he lives, I shall live. Because he lives, you shall live. That is Easter. That is what we are rejoicing about. The grave could not hold Jesus. Jesus is alive, and he is going to give us life also. I hope these words encourage you on this Sunday after Easter. I hope these words encourage you to know that there is hope and encouragement. I hope you know that life is worth the living because he lives. I hope you know that the Lord has taken hold of your precious hand and will lead you through this time. I hope you know that we shall be together forever one day. Praise God. Now, as we close this morning, I'm going to once again ask Karen to close us out with a beautiful song that can affirm this in our hearts today. Amen. <laughs>